Just waiting for Barrett to turn his camera on. There we are. Oh. It's now 6.30. Hi, Can I welcome you all to this virtual pension fund committee meeting. Um, present are members, a co-opted member, advisors to the panel and several council officers. Before we proceed, could I please remind all of those present in the virtual meeting to put their phones on silent? I will also do that myself. <laughs> there we are. Um, can I also rem refer members and officers to the published protocols for holding virtual meetings, which include the following. Members of the committee should ensure they have their videos on at all times, but put microphones on mute unless they are speaking. Other members, advisors, co-opted members and officers should switch their videos and mute their microphones until they are invited to speak. In the case of a technical problem, the meeting will adjourn until the issue is resolved. If the technical problem persists and the meeting is in quorum, the quorum is three of the pension fund committee and, and rearranged for a later date. Members of the committee, as well as advisors and officers, are reminded to use the raised hand function to indicate they wish to speak. And part one of this meeting is being audio and video recorded and will be available to watch and listen to on the council website. May I also ask all present not to stray into a discussion on part two appendices or papers, which can be discussed only in the private session which follows. Councillors and relevant members will need to log in to the private meeting link, at which point the live broadcast will then also stop. Um, attendance by reserve members. I don't think we have any reserve members. We've got all four full members of the committee here. Uh, item two, declarations of interest have been published on the website and are taken as read. Um, are there any declarations of interest from members present in the meeting? No, uh, I don't Keith, see Keith, can you hear me? It's, it's Howard here. Um, yeah. Keith, um, I spoke to Andrew yesterday and sent him an email because my declarations weren't put in the minutes last time. And he's going to check, I think, they're on the website. I made a very slight amendment, an addition for this uh, pension fund meeting um, and he has got that because I emailed it to him and so if there's any problems just um, speak to him. He's been very helpful. Okay, thanks for that Howard. We can move on to item three, minutes. Can we agree the minutes of the meeting held on the 25th of November 2020 and can they be taken as read and subsequently signed as a correct record? I don't see anybody dissenting from that, so we will take those minutes as agreed. Item four, public questions. None have been received by the deadline. Um, petitions, I haven't um, received any notice of anybody presenting a petition. Are there any petitions to be received? I don't see any. Um, deputations, none were received by Item seven, review of the pension fund communication policy, which is on pages 15 to 24 of the agenda. Jeremy, would you like to introduce the report in brief? Uh, thank, thank you, thank you, Chair. Briefly, um, th this is this uh, is a review and a, a review and, and dating of the fund's previous policy, which uh, which was probably not really. Um, up to the job anymore. It, it went ran to over 20 pages, which is which is rather long for a, co a communications policy. Um, so what we've and it's also appropriate to review these regularly, particularly as we've updated significantly our ways of working as a, as a result of the COVID of the COVID pandemic. So what I, what I did, I took the opportunity to look at some good examples from other LGPS funds and uh, borrow borrow those ideas to, to put this one together. Um, the pension board looked at looked at this on um, on, the, on on the fourth of March at their at their most recent meeting and uh, endorsed the uh, 
the proposed policy for adoption and uh, and so I'll just pass it back to you at that point uh, for, for, for any questions and uh, whatever else needs to be done with it chair. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from members of the committee? I can't see any coming up. So the recommendation is that the um, the committee is requested to consider the ATD and to approve it for adoption from the 1st of April 2021. Is that agreed? Yeah, I should also point out that um, there is a recommendation from the Pension Board on Supplemental Agenda 1, pages 3 to 4, which I'm sure we've all read and taken into account. So item 8, review of the Pension Fund Governance Compliance Statement, which is on pages 25 to 42. Once again, Jeremy, if you can introduce the report briefly. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. This is another one of those documents that we that we need to need to review regularly. Um, and and, it, and uh, it, this uh, again has been through the pension board, who've who've considered it and, uh, and have made a couple of uh, made a couple of comments uh, comments for yourselves. In terms of the governance compliance statement itself, the main area where we, where the council only partially complies is around the rep representation of scheme members and uh, employers other than the London Borough of Harrow. Um, we we don't have any of the latter. And the scheme member representatives uh, uh, have observer status only. They, they don't have voting rights. I'd, I'd have to say that this this situation is, is actually consistent with most other London boroughs. And I think that the, and the one of the reasons for that is that um, almost without exception in in London, the administering authority, which in this case is the London Borough of Harrow, is also is also the main employer in the fund. And as as, as you will be be aware from previous meetings, Harrow accounts for about 80, between 80 and 85 percent of the total fund membership uh, in Harrow. The, that's very different in some of the larger county funds where, where, they, will have a num where they will have a number of large employers and so um, the issue of non of other employers being represented at the, the meetings is, is a more significant issue for them. The other thing that I've highlighted in this report is that uh, the good governance review which was being undertaken by the Scheme Advisory Board has now resurfaced again. Um, the, the Scheme Advisory Board published the final report on, on that in February, and there are some key recommendations which are listed in paragraph five, and we'll be, we'll be working to develop a, an approach to implementing those, re, those, regulate, those recommendations in, in the coming year, um, and We'll be bringing a report back to the uh, to the next meeting on on how we do that after liaising with Hyman's Robertson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Can't see it. Norman. Yes, Mr. Chairman, and I did raise my electronic hand as well. Um, I, actually, it's not really a question, and I know compliance is, is riveting, but um, there's nowhere else in the agenda for, to, for, to mention this, but um, the Harrow scheme, uh, many of us may know, uh, were award winners at the LAPF Investment Awards Conference um, Awards Night on the 2nd of December last, and the Harrow scheme were joint winners of the Scheme Administration Award. So that's very much linked to compliance. Some of the stuff that um, Jeremy was just talking about. So I think I'd like the committee to minute uh, our congratulations to Jeremy and his team, if if you agree. Thank you. Certainly, Sir. I can't see anybody dissenting from that. So Jeremy, thank you very much. And um, one day we'll be able to see the award in person, I suppose. Yeah, uh, thank there you is very a recommendation. Much. Um, and pass it on to all the team as well. Uh, there is a recommendation from the Pension Board on the Supplemental Agenda 1, pages 5 to 6, and taking that into account, the recommendation is that the committee is requested to note the latest position on the LGPS Good Governance Review and to consider the updated governance compliance statement and subject to any comments to approve it for adoption. Is that agreed? Yes, that's agreed. Agreed. Uh, uh, 
Excellent. Excellent. Uh, item nine, which is the update on regulatory changes to the public sector exit payments. Jeremy. Uh, yes, thank thank you, Chair. Hopefully, this is this will be the last we hear of this uh, for this for a while. You'll recall that at the last meeting we we reported on the introduction of the public sector uh, exit, what what was known colloquially as the public sector exit exit cap, and the resulting uh, conflict between the the LGPS regs and the uh, limitation of exit payments regulations. I'm pleased to say that in February the uh, the uh, cap was removed uh, as the um, limitation of exit payments regulations were, were revoked by by the Treasury. Um, the, the revocation regulations do require employers to take some actions in cases where where an individual may have been placed in a worse position as a result of the uh, application of the exit cap than they would otherwise have been. Um, I'm pleased to report that Har in Harrow we don't have any cases in which we paid someone a, a reduced pension, so the impact for us is, is, is minimal. Um, what we have done with Hyman's Roberts, and we've looked again at whether we should revert back to the old scheme specific pension strain cost factors to be applied in the case of early retirement. And Hyman's advice, uh, which is explained in paragraphs nine and ten of the report, was was to was that if um, if it was administratively appropriate, we should continue to stay with the GAD factors, not least because they think that uh, there will be a another version of the exit cap coming back in, in due course. Um, administratively, the number of cases we've been having is, is having is low, so um, staying with the the um, GAD GAD factors rather than reverting back to the scheme specific ones uh, isn't an issue for us. So we we've rec we've recommended that uh, chair. The other thing to note is that the, we we the, the the this you'll recall last time had been flagged as a red risk on the um, on the pension funds risk register because if if you've got two sets of regulations in conflict, it's very difficult to comply with both of them, and uh, and 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 not complying with with one or the other does leave you with a risk of um, exposure to litigation. Well, thankfully that risk has now gone, so we'll be amending the risk register as well as, as a result as a result of this change. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Richard, you got a question. Thank you, Chairman, and I hope you're all well. Is this something that you would uh, like to refer to the unions for their input? It seems appropriate that we should uh, ask them for their uh, thoughts on this. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what not sure what um, what what the unions how the unions could add add anything at this point. The the regulations of the regulations have been removed and we're back, which is what I think the unions would have wanted to do. A number of um, a number of um, trade unions have had were planning to make representations on the exit cap, and um, and I think the pe the pending litigation may well have been part of the reason the Treasury uh, decided to act as, as quickly as it did. Um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that there's anything. I'm not sure that there's anything that the unions could add at this stage because we're back in the position that we were previously. My, my question was tinged for another purpose. Forgive me. I totally agree with your answer, but I'm very keen to see more engagement with the unions who represent the members in this panel. And by going back to them as something which is a positive and a good news, I'm trying to s offer a suite, a, a, a line that presents, please engage with us more. It's your members, your people, and I would welcome more positive engagement. That's all, folks. Norman. Um, yes, um, I, I just wanted to ask Jeremy um, the change. The, there are going to be changes introduced this year um, for the proposals to restrict these exit payments. Is that will that will that make this more robust to ensure it doesn't happen again, or, or does it bring back the problem? Does it make it worse? Presumably, it's going to improve the situation. Um, I, I think until, and I think the short answer is, Chair, until we see what the um, Revised proposals are. We can't be certain of that. Although I, I think it's, I think it's, it would not be unreasonable to assume that having uh, pushed something through without 
without as much um, detailed consideration as perhaps they should have done that they will have that the civil servants will have learned their le learn their lesson and, and get it right get it right this time um, one, one would one would certainly hope so Dean do you want to come in um, yeah, just on um, Richard's point uh, regarding the trade unions. Um, yeah, very obviously the trade unions are fully aware of uh, the position now and uh, appreciate the position now. I do agree with him though that um, the trade union representatives, a representative from the recognised unions of Harrow um, should um, be invited uh, along along to this because um, they they clearly have an interest uh, in this, so um, not sure whether that's been given. Um, I, I, you know, I don't communicate with the trade unions in in Harrow because um, I'm not really allowed to. Um, but um, in answer to Richard's question, the trade union movement are are very positive and very appreciative of the position taken now, um, and they they did have a a you know there was a review that they were doing and things like that and they put that on hold because uh we know it'll probably come around again at one point thank you yeah i would point out that um both recognized trade unions are invited along to this meeting as observers um but there's a vacancy on the unison side and um the GMB representative, I can't remember if um, in the last year or two she'd ever attended. So they've got an invitation to come along to the Pension Fund Committee, but they don't seem to want to take it up. OK, um, I will uh, use my other position to make sure that a GMB representative is coming along. Thanks. Yeah, it's Patricia Belgrave, I think. Um, Right. Yeah, Pamela. Yes. Pamela. Pamela. Belgrave, that's right. OK. Um, I can't see anything. Everybody's had a go. Oh, is, is that uh, somebody put a hand up? Howard. You there, Howard? Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Um, just, just a quickie, which is that uh, we are very lucky in Harrow because several London boroughs have got lots of issues around this exit cap, and um, I don't know it's, if it's because the unions in those boroughs are more militant or what have you, but they're they are big issues, and there have been all sorts of discussions with central government and with their their own law officers. So. Um, well, as I say, do you remember, Keith, we used to have a thing called the Early Retirement Fund. I remember chairing it for donkey's years. And uh, okay. we had the odd issue. We had the odd issue, but they were individual cases and they were taken on their merits. So, um, as I say, we're, we're fortunate that we don't see, seem to have an issue, but it will rumble on for a bit. And um, one can easily find out what they are. There are some very interesting issues. So that's... Uh, my only contribution to this to say well done Arrow for not uh, having problems. All right, Dean. Yeah, just on the Howard point, i um, sorry, most of those issues um, in other authorities are on the voluntary uh, retirement in those areas there um, and because of the uh, pension strain on voluntary retirement. Um, yeah, a lot of the authorities are saying no to that, although they're going through massive restructures. So I think it's um, a slightly different kind of um, issue than the than the cap. It is all about you know how they um, deliver those voluntary uh, redundancies and, and stuff like that. Um, that's that's what it is. Somebody offers voluntary redundancy. We know there's a, a big strain on the the pension, and a lot of authorities are saying no. To that, and that's that. There lies the the problems with the trade unions at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Jeremy. Yeah, th uh, thank you, Chair. If, if uh, just to add to what uh, to what Councillor Gilligan just uh, just said, I think the um, 
I think that the authorities that have had any, have had practical problems in terms of the shift be, in, in terms of having to deal with the fact that that some people were worse off is where those voluntary redundancy schemes led to people actually leaving the organization in the period when the cap was in force and, th and that's that's the issue whereas the fact that we haven't had a significant head count reduction exercise with a voluntary redundancy redundancy scheme uh, um, is is one reason why we haven't had those impacts okay all right can't see any hands up so can we agree the recommendations on page 43 of the agenda yep that is agreed okay. yes excellent right move on to item 10 which is the training program for 21 22 that's for us um jeremy again yeah th uh, thank you chair th yeah th this is um this this report is primarily to to um prompt the committee to um, consider how how we approach uh, training in, in the current uh, in, or in the coming financial year. Um, paragraph five remi re reminds us um, that there are a number of ways that number of ways that we can that we can do this um, by either by using as we've done tonight, having a short session before the uh, before the committee meeting or, or having um, having longer sessions or manager days or in some cases as, as gen I think generally the triennial valuation is an, is an example of this where uh, of actually having a, a presentation as part of the meeting on a, on a particular item. Um, so it's partly about how how you um, would like to would like to undertake training in the coming year and also to, to also to highlight in paragraph eight a number of issues where um, where where it, where we think that that uh, that that you will need some training sooner uh, sooner rather than later. One is the um, uh, the one that I highlighted is the uh, good good governance review. Um, but when we when we get towards the end of the year, we'll be moving towards another triennial valuation again. They they seem to come round very quickly. Um, there's the um, impacts of climate change and TCFD uh, come, will be coming 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 upon us. And in the investment strategy review paper later, we um, we recommending that uh, we have a presentation from London London CIV on some new fund offerings. So th those are some specific things. It may be that members have other have other things that they feel we we need a bit of training on as well. Um, thank you, Richard. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't think it's a matter of either or. It's a blend. Um, I think the one hour sessions before the uh, regular meetings should be continued. I think they are positive. Some are more interesting than others. Some are more easy to understand, but they are positive and should be continued. Um, I welcome manager days. My experience over a number of years seeing various members with their diaries and their business commitments, a half day, it, it doesn't achieve what a full day does. And if we can do a, a manager day where we can see a lot of people understand it and get get to grips it seems to have been very successful as for the triannual valuation uh, that's a separate trading and since it's every three years i think we can afford to uh, to adopt a half day or, or whatever to it um, so i approve i support continuation of one hour before meetings and i like full days where we meet the manager thank you Thank you, Richard. Are there any other comments or items that you think we should be trained on in particular? Howard. Uh, thanks, uh, Keith. Uh, sorry, just fiddling around trying to. Uh, I presume you can you can hear me. Um, yes, yes, I basically agree with Richard. But um, until COVID ends, there's no point in my, my opinion is that we don't have manager days. I think uh, as long as we are having uh, sessions like we are at the moment uh, on Zoom or what have you, um, then I think, for instance, tonight, it was a very good session. Um, uh, one session uh, per uh, meeting, per pension fund committee meeting is fine. The manager days come into thrall when, um, of course, we're back to normal. Um, I do hope 
sincerely that, um, by the way, I agree with that list of four themes because I think they're all important. And I can't think of anything else that uh, is relatively important, um, but we can always adjust that. But I do think that uh, and hope that the triennial evaluation uh, at the end of next March 2022, uh, by then we'll be back to normal and we can have manager days, which I think we should consider because we'll get through much more business uh, that way than doing one session at a time uh, online. So that's that's basically my view. On the whole, I think it's a good report and I'm uh, willing to go ahead with that. All right, Norman. Um, yeah, yes, Mr Chairman, I, mean, I, uh, I first of all think the one hour before the meeting is a good idea. Uh, you know, we we should uh, give input as to what we what we want. Uh, so I think it's a good idea. Um, I, I, you know, I, I uh, don't see as such with, but I think the the virtual meeting idea works very well, uh, and I think a, a manager day uh, with a number of speakers, as long as we have several breaks, uh, it can work virtually. Um, I think that's not a problem at all, uh, and it's pro probably a lot easier for for a lot of us to do that. Um, so um, I'd be happy to to do both virtually. Thank you. Thank you. Colin? Colin? Yeah, so I'm just going to comment on the manager day aspect. I think it's a good idea to have manager days, um, but the main manager now is the London Civ, and the London Civ is becoming stronger on choosing and changing managers without reference to other people. So you're going to, I think, have to take it in the spirit of having a lot of time with the London Civ, which is the main manager really, and then with the other underlying managers, it's a different kind of thing. It's you can afford to change the asset class really if you don't like the manager. You, you don't really get to choose for some of the funds anymore. You know, what manager is going to be there? So I think it's a good idea, but you've got to focus, I think, on London Civ as much as on the underlying managers. Because it's really important that the London Civ does the correct job for you. And that you understand what they're doing. So, so do both, as Richard said. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement. We want to keep the, the hour or 45 minutes before uh, each meeting as a training session. May ne necessarily um, have to increase that and perhaps start half an hour earlier or something to get all of these things in and uh, take on board exactly what Colin said there. Um, have you still got your hand up, Colin? Did you want to come back? No, not at all. Sorry. All right. Over to you, Dean. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I, I missed today's um, session, so how do I recap on that? Um, well, we're going to send round the, uh, well, we've already sent round the slides for the meeting. They 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 went round um, on Tuesday, yesterday or the day before. And um, Let's just have a look at those and then give Jeremy a call if you want to get any more information. Yeah, I just wanted to know whether you were told anything different than what's on the slide. So, you know, I'd like to be informed. Thank you. No, no, no. No, no, we weren't. There weren't any questions. Well, there's just one question. Um, um, now we, we, we finished about 10 past, so we just went through the 17 slides and um, that was it. OK. Right. Um, we've got a recommendation on page 49 that the committee is requested to note the report and to identify if there is any specific training they wish officers to organise. Is that agreed? Agreed, Mr Chairman. Agreed. Agreed. Right. My screen seems to be just um, taking one person at a time at the moment. Anyway. Um, item 11 is the update on the London Civ and investment pooling arrangements on pages 53 to 56. Jeremy? Yes, th uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, 
this this is this is really just for really just for noting um as as you as you're all aware the uh direction of travel with the, with uh with the uh local government uh investment local government pension scheme investments is is that we now move towards pooling and uh, there is an informal target of getting 75 percent of our assets pooled by 2023 uh, um, harrow's making making really good progress with this actually we we as of the 28th of february we're up to 56 percent uh, pooled um, and with our commitment to infrastructure it's actually six around about 62 percent um if the uh, recommendations on this on the strategy paper on it which is on part two tonight are implemented that would take us over uh, would take us over 67 percent um so we're, we're actually as i say we're making we're making good progress um in the report we've also highlighted the range of funds that the civ currently have available and under development um for, uh, for, for the for the uh committee's uh, committee's information and i can provide further detail on those if, if anybody would like those um thank you thank you jeremy has anybody got any questions can't see any so if um if we can just note the report as requested on page 53 that's noted and item 12 is the performance dashboard and update on regular items uh, I should remind the committee that appendices three and four are confidential and should not be discussed. Right. Uh, th thanks, thanks, Chair. The um, uh, there's there's the usual the usual range of of information here. There's the uh, for the first section has got the. Uh, proposed work program for for the coming year um there are a couple of things that have been duplicated at, at, at a number of meetings and we'll i'll certainly tidy that up before uh be, before that before the next meeting uh, and I, I apologize for for that um the uh, investment dashboard which is which is at, at appendix one shows the uh the strong Strong performance on the fund. The funding level is is up to ninety five percent of the thirty first of December twenty twelve. Um, this is pretty much back at where we were after the two thousand and nineteen valuation, actually, um, because although assets have done have done well, uh, guilt yields have had an impact on on liabilities. The um, the fund has increased further, as as can be shown in Appendix Five. It was uh, up to nine hundred and fifty three million at uh, the twenty eighth of February. Um, the uh, the only other thing to to note is the uh, is the the perk uh, performance report is is annex is is in the open agenda and as the chairman has identified the some detailed comments about the various investment managers from Colin Robertson and also from Aon are in the part two agenda so should you need to discuss that as um, I'll echo the chair's uh, comment there thank you. All right. Are there any comments? No, I don't see any hands going up. Um, so the recommendation is that the, uh, the committee is requested review and comment as necessary on the performance investment dashboard report and on the work program for the remainder of 2021 and 21-22. Is that agreed? Agreed. Yes, I don't see any dissent, so we'll agreed. take that as agreed. And then we move um, on to any other urgent business. I haven't been notified. I've I've had a absence from Robert, who I has had a bereavement that is fairly close to her, and I'd like. Um, I don't know if Jeremy knows anything more about the circumstances. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dawn's um, Dawn's partner, Dawn's partner, Christian, sadly uh, died just over two weeks ago. Um, oh he he he'd been suffering from cancer, and uh, sadly he lost his fight again against that. Um, and so Dawn has been off for, has been off for a couple of weeks. She's 
she's back in the office now, but uh, but she's because she's catching. She's obviously uh, got a bit of a backlog to catch up on, which is why she's not here this evening. Uh, thank you. Okay, can we minute our condolences to Dawn, and also if um, if Jeremy, you can pass those on to her immediately. Howard. Yeah, I just, I just was going to suggest that, Chair. That's all. That we all uh, give Dawn our, our heartfelt condolences. It's a terrible thing to happen, and I uh, hope she'll be back as soon as possible. And I'm just wondering, Chair, is it um, are, are people sort of sending um, uh, flowers or something or some gesture, some tangible gesture from from? Uh, no, they the aren't at the moment. Uh, okay. Uh, that, that's just, been just, organised. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's great. It's been all of my central. All right. Okay, okay, okay. great. Okay, so if there's no other business, we'll um we'll close part one and um we all have to log on again in part two. And I suggest that uh we have a, a nine minute break and try and log on ready for seven fifteen. Thank you very much.